Welcome to Team World Sheep Reviews. I'm going to do all the whole of this episode while on the treadmill. Thank you for watching Team Moody Sheep Reviews. Ah, I hope you're uh, keeping safe and I hope you're uh, making the most of the lockdown. Anyway, here we are, back in the shed. A little update on the jumper. Now, when I posted the video about the multi-protocol module, I had a bit of a slate in as expected. I was a little bit premature because they've announced a firmware revision. 10 days later, there was another firmware revision. I had a little explore and I thought, well, I may as well download it and try it. Right, so I followed the link to the instruction page and download the appropriate firmware, which is version 13091. But what a list. So I had to find out what when I needed. Now I went with the multi STM OpenTX and it was the TIA version, T A R, which is the channel order. Now my previous one had a different channel order, so I thought, what the hell, I'll download that ch channel order. So I popped out the memory card into the PC and I'm using a Mac, so it might be a little bit different for some people, but the principles are the same. So I identified the file where I downloaded and copied that file. And simply pasted it into the firmware folder on the transmitter's memory card. And ejected. Never pull it out, just eject it, let the computer eject it. And then popped it back into my radio and booted up the radio. And obviously the second step on the instructions was to go into the system menu. So I simply pressed and hold on the system menu, paged across then to the, uh, the files and firmware, went into the firmware folder and selected on there and there it was. So I pressed there and it was as simple as flashing the internal multi, which is obviously the multi -pro protocol. And away you went. Speeded this up a little bit, so ignore that. It takes a little bit longer. And that was it. So it was a, a simple process. So after exiting, I decided to power down and restarted it to confirm that it was there. And if there was any errors, I was hope, kind of hoping the radio would tell me that there was errors. But no. No errors reported. So my first interest was to go in and have a look to see whether I could find the L12 protocol. And I scrolled through, got to the FreeSky folder, and I had the D16, D8, D8, but no L12. Hmm. So I started to flick through all the other protocols, which was quite a list and I was looking for a new one. Is there must be a new free sky one. So at this point, I was starting to get a little bit despondent. I found another free sky, but no, nope, no. Nope. And I was just going through the motions. And then, whoa, what was that? Oh, the free sky L, and there it is, LR12. I don't know what the sixth channel is, but, hmm, I wonder. Right, so the firmware, the latest firmware for the multi-protocol module is now on the radio. Let's have a look on the bench and we'll bind it to L9R. So if I go into the model settings and I go up, it actually lives in the FreeSky L category and there's a couple of options underneath it. There's an L12 6 channel, whatever the hell that is, because I've never heard of that, and the L12. So 
So we'll stick with the L12. And then all I need is an L9R receiver, which I don't know whether you've seen these, and a motor and an ESC. So I will put it into bind mode ready. And this is where you need octopus hands. So I'll put it there ready to push in. And then I'll hold it there. And that is in bind mode. Now these don't like to be too close to the transmitter, so I'm going to move the transmitter. And I'm going to try to, to see if it'll bind. If it binds, these little LEDs will flash. I now have the L9R capability. However, I'm going to be using the FreeSky adapter, the FreeSky module. Why? Because I bought the FreeSky module, and as I said in my previous video, I'd have more faith in this being tuned perfectly to the L9R than I would with this multi protocol module. With the L9R, there is no telemetry, so I don't get the early warning to say telemetry failure, telemetry failure. You, you, you can feed back RSSI signals, but you have to do it through the video, and it's a visual reference of your RSSI. That's what the boys do. But if you fly in line of sight, which some of my models, I've got these, they are basically a long range 2.4 gigahertz receiver which I think the, the normal receivers are say a mile and a half and that receiver is, I think it's three miles they say it's twice the range of a standard receiver and what they've done they've pulled out all the telemetry so it's, it, it's, it hasn't got the complications of the telemetry in the transmission so it, it's they've they've cut it down made it more sensitive but it hasn't got the telemetry. By taking out the telemetry, it's given them that extended range because it's less complex data being transmitted. And that's an ideal receiver. They're very popular. A lot of people have been using them in wings and, and the like to get a little bit of extra range with FPV. You will not outfly the range with 5.8 gigahertz video. And I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have people going, well, I've got a tracker with a high gain aerial that long. Rule of thumb, standard 5.8 video gear. You will not, even on the 600 milliwatt range, you will not outfly the range of that. But I don't want to be proven wrong. No. It's handy to have. They're about £30. But you get some good range. So if you're using a, a glider, or something that's going to push the range then it's a handy one to have but it hasn't got telemetry and you don't get that early warning so that is important to mention to keep the module in play the multi-protocol module i bought a little stumpy aerial and you can actually remove that it's an sma stumpy aerial and just to prove it's not a joke it is an actual antenna, so I pulled that off, especially for you. So I can still use the multi protocol module, which would be ideal for for the smaller micro quads or indoor stuff, because there'll be plenty of range off that. And I can use my the module on the back. Like I said, you can do it all from the from your setup. When you set and bind, it knows which module you've bound. When you select that model, the XJT will power up. So unless it's needed, it's not transmitting. So it's not going to interfere with anything. If you're using a model that's using the multi-protocol internal module, this doesn't power up. So it's not going to interfere with that. 
so your, your multi-protocol module will work so it only powers up one or the other which is quite important so thank you for watching team woolly sheep reviews i hope you're keeping safe and if you like what you see subscribe and there's more to come thank you